That was a fast 45 seconds, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, good morning. How y'all doing out there? Morning. That wasn't loud enough. How y'all doing out there? Woo! You guys are the cheap seats. Y'all hear me out there? Hallelujah. How about standing with us? Let's lift up the Lord. Welcome to Wow Church. Stands for Worship on the Water. Thank you for joining us online. Anybody that might be upstairs, thank you for the Sunday shuffle. And let, let the praises ring. Let's worship him today. Bless you. You guys can be seated. I almost brought my coffee up here. Well, that, that wouldn't have been a problem. Everybody I mean, else has their coffee in their uh, hands. That's right. So that's it's right. Okay. Good morning. Where's all my Good coffee morning. people at, huh? Yeah. I'm still drinking some. <laughs> uh, welcome to Worship on the Water. Uh, this is church on the beach yeah, okay absolutely. church on the gulf of mexico with the white sandy beaches in the background sand dunes uh, this is like nothing else you know there's not a lot of places you get to come and experience this moment and let me tell you every sunday people show up from all over the world they watch from all over the world all they come from different parts and 
God moves every Sunday. I mean, he, he moves. People come in and they're like, eh, I don't know about this. <laughs> and then they're like, oh, whoa, that was, that was serious. You know, like, like, God, like this is for real. And um, actually, the, the, not that it's just for real, but you leave and you know that there is a God in heaven that loves you. Like he, he truly loves you. And so you walk away and you have this, this word, uh, Proverbs 25, 25 says that, um, it's a, a refreshing to hear the good news mm. of, of his word and it revives your spirit and it revives your soul. And that's what happens on Sunday morning here at Worship on the Water at Florabama. He revives our spirits We're and believing. our souls. Yeah. And so welcome. You're going to be revived it's be good. today. It's be a great morning. <laughs> be a great morning. And if you happen to be here next Sunday, it is going to be a very, very special Sunday. we we set up this great big tent with a thousand chairs up on under it on the beach. And so you can just extend your vacation. Yeah. I've heard a lot of you this morning. They're like, we're not going to be here next week. And I'm like, just go ahead and stay. It's just a little extension. You know, yeah. you can come yeah. and celebrate with us. Um, but it is going to be a, a beautiful moment. We have a Good Friday service, a sunrise service on Sunday morning, and then the regular 9 and 11 o'clock. And uh, we're also baptizing people. Yes. Like, we, we do it every Sunday. If you want to jump in that water and it's cold, we'll do it. You know, yeah. like every Sunday, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll baptize you. And we are expecting a lot of baptisms um, for Easter Sunday. So uh, if, you, if you are interested in that, you can just let us know. Go to the info table uh, or talk to somebody, and uh, we can make that happen. But please join us next Sunday for Easter. Yeah, there's a lot of information there in your bulletin that you received on your way in about what's going on in and around Worship on the Water. In fact, some of you actually received a what we call an Easter bundle invite uh, here, and that's just for you to kind of go throughout this week and, and make sure people are informed or any loved ones, neighbors, friends, family, uh, to just to join you out here with us uh, on, on Easter weekend here. You know, studies show that there are people this time of year as we approach the holiday season of Easter, they are more receptive to being invited to church. The studies actually say that they are ready and anticipating to be invited to church this weekend. And so here, we're going to make it nice and easy. It's a simple invite. It's non-pressure. Uh, it's just letting them know what a great moment it is going to be on the beach. Hey, we've been tracking the weather, and the weather is going to be fantastic. 75 it, degrees. It, it is going to be Sunscreen amazing. on top you of my head. You will have to bring your sunscreen. <laughs> It's going to be really, really good. It's going to be, it's be a fantastic weekend uh, that you don't want to miss, whether you're here for the first time or uh, here for uh, the m multiple times. It's going to be out there. It's going to be really fantastic, fantastic. And we are believing for uh, baptisms there. And uh, in, in fact, I think April kind of uh, forgot there, but I, I feel like we got some, we got some first timers in the house this morning. If you're brave enough to say, this is my first time here at church to worship on the water at Florabama, will you raise your hand for us right where you are right there? Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Wow. Come on. Wow. Welcome. Wow. Hey, we... I like it. This, this guy back here, he's just holding his hand up. Yeah, like, he's it's still my holding birthday. his hand up. He's a birthday guy, uh -huh. right? That's, that's, it. that's, that's it. a part of the birthday guy. I promise you, we don't bite, okay? We don't bite, everybody. It's going to be a really, really great uh, day, and it's going to be great into Easter weekend there. If you will, go ahead and stand back up. Uh, for us, my favorite part of the service. I love to get out of the comfort zone all the way from the sand dunes all the way up to the stage. Get out of your comfort zone. Welcome somebody to church this morning. Thank you. 
high. We're going to go right back into worship. An uh, oldie, but a uh, very goodie. That's terrible English, but you get what I'm saying. How many know we serve a great God? Amen. How great thou art. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I can also wonder, consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Come on, sing this with me. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Oh, how great, how great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Look at that third verse. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I suppose he can take it. Then on that cross, my burdens gladly bearing. And I to take away my sin. Then sings, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. Oh, how great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. And I shall bow. In humble adoration, and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art! Oh, lift it up! Oh, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Oh, how great Thou art! Then sings, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Okay, now watch me. How great thou art. I want to hear y'all. How great. That's pretty good right there, guys. He's a great God, ain't he? Hallelujah. Woo. I think I need to be out there. So Y'all need to be up here. Good Lord, yes. that was good. Mm. I kind of want to go back and do that some more. Yeah, let's do it again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship His holy name. The sun comes 
rise up It's a new day dawning It's time to sing This song again Whatever may pass And whatever lies before me Let me be singing When the evening comes Let's bless the Lord Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, and worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship the holy name. And my strength is fading The end draws near And my time has come Still my soul will sing Your praise unending Ten thousand years Did forevermore Bless the Lord And just bless the Lord My strength is fading, the end draws near, and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years, and, and then forevermore. Must set this up, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Wow, what an amazing time and, and moment to, uh, to remind our soul that there is a Lord, that there is a God, and that there is a Savior worth praising. Uh, whew. I tell you what, we, I thought like we were about to Break out! We had a choir here this morning. This was, this was something. This was something this morning. It was absolutely yes. It was Richard. It was absolutely uh, amazing. What a beautiful, beautiful Sunday in March. Uh, so good to see everybody. Even if you're sitting on the sand dunes, it's good to see you too. I like that right there. I, look, everybody in here. I'm sorry, but that really is the best seats in the house. Okay, uh, it's something something special back there uh, under the sunshine. Now, they, they didn't know they needed to bring sunscreen with them, uh, but it is and it's some incredible seats uh, in the house. What a beautiful, beautiful Sunday in March. It's Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Yeah, Palm Sunday. Some of you are like, Palm, Palm Tree, Palm Sunday. I'll, I'll talk more about it here in a minute, all right? It's, uh, but it's a great, great, beautiful, beautiful morning. And uh, it's uh, not only Palm Sunday in the month of March, uh, but with the month of March throughout our entire uh, country, I don't know if you know this, but there's this thing called March Madness. Ah, I knew I, knew I could count on you. I knew I could. I knew I could. Some of you are like, huh? 
March what? Um, no, it's, it's, it's March Madness. It's when there's a, a, a women's and a men's basketball tournament each and every year towards mid-March, towards the end of March, and where it's the, the conclusion of the basketball season, the college basketball season. I love basketball. Um, I, uh, I used to be 6'6". Six, six. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was a, I mean, I was a, woo, I was a baller back in the day. That was when I was 6'6", six, six. but I no longer am that anymore. Um, I love basketball. I love coaching basketball as a better coach than a player, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay to admit that. I mean, I'm okay to, to admit that, but I, I love basketball, and every time this year comes around, college basketball rolls around, I get really excited. I told April the other day, I said, April, um, my goal here uh, is to reconnect with basketball again. I said, because there's no better time than March Madness, baby. Like, it just is the word. Ever since the word madness, it is what it is. It's, 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 it's your team trying to get into the dance or the big tournament, and your team barely missing getting into the tournament. Of course, then when they get into it, it's, it's, this, it's this just... I mean, just this story playing. There's always this Cinderella team that comes out of nowhere to, to do great things and to beat the teams that are supposed to win it all. And, and they do this kind of madness thing because they do it all at the last second, right? Like, they do it all at the last second. It's all the last minute. It's the last heave. It's the last shot. It's the, I mean, it comes down to the wire. And that's what makes March Madness truly, truly special. And it really is a nationwide thing. It really is. I mean, it's not just the, the crazy fans. You know, I saw the other day, uh, there was a group of guys, they were so March Madness crazy, uh, they wore Speedos to the game. Seriously, seriously. Of a group of about 10 guys, they, 10, 10 guys, college guys, they, they wore Speedos to the game and they sat behind the basketball goal. And so, ev- yeah, yeah. So every time the opposing team shot free throws... There they go, dancing in their Speedo, right? There. And you, I mean, you, when they missed, you, you know, I mean, they just, you just had a, fit. it was smart madness. Like, that's really what it is. And um, do you know, and so there's this big bracket thing. There's this big, big, big bracket thing going on. And, and 31 million brackets were filled out by people all across the United States and more, 31 million and after the first day, only 2,100 of them were still correct. Wow, can you believe that? And, and then at the end of the second day, the last nightcap game, only one bracket was remaining. And after the last game of the second night, no brackets out of 31 million guesses and anticipation, none of them are perfect. All of them lose the idea and thought to win a million dollars. Because if you fill out the right bracket, that, that's, that, you, you get the chance to win a million dollars. And two days into it, 31 million brackets, none. Nobody. It is March madness in every way. And I think at the end of the day, it's all about your team. It's, it's all about your school. It's all about your coach. It's all about your favorite player. It's all about... It's all about them putting the school's name on the map, right? Like it's all about making a name for them. It's all about making a name for your your alma mater or your school of choice or or, or your athletes. It's it's all about the, the whole idea is to put your name and the school's name on the map. Put it out there for people to recognize and see. And there was once a man in the Bible who did exactly that one day. He put a city's name on the map. Now, when I mean he put it on the map, I mean he put it on the map. This guy's name was Zechariah. Zechariah. Zechariah lived 500 years before Jesus was born. 500 years before Jesus was born. Now, Zechariah was not just a normal, average Jane and Joe, right? Like he, 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 he was very, very fervent about the things of God. Uh, in fact, in his day, he would be called the man of God or, 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 or the prophet of God. 
Uh, It was his responsibility, calling, and task during his day when he lived to, to remind all of the people of God's purposes for their lives. It was, it was his job to, to get them back on track and to tell them, no, 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 this way, to keep God's agenda and task at hand. He was, he was fervent about people walking out their calling and purposes for God in their lives. It, it, Zechariah was not just an ordinary man. He, he was the man of God in the day. He was the prophet of the day. He was zealous about the things of God and the people of God and God's purpose and work here on this earth. Zechariah's ministry or life could be summed up with the idea of, of that he, he emphasized he emphasized an unparalleled salvation that would come through a king who would rebuild the temple. If you had to sum up what was Zechariah's ministry and purpose 500 years before Jesus was even born, it was that he emphasized that an unparalleled salvation would come. Would come through a king who would rebuild the temple. That was Zechariah. Now, the temple is an interesting word. We don't use, use that word a lot, but we would maybe use it and call it today as a church, right? And he is ref, re, referring to rebuilding the temple because it had been destroyed in his day. It had been destroyed by uh, enemies in the surrounding regions and locations and nations around him. Sure, there were, other, there, were, there, were, there were other buildings and homes that had been destroyed, but the temple of God was not just any normal building. No, no, no. The temple of God in its day served as this is where God dwelled among his people. This is where he inhabited. This is where he rested. This is where he lived so he could dwell and be in and around and among the people. The temple of God wasn't just another normal building. It was of great significance and magnitude in that day. And Zechariah emphasized that an unparalleled salvation would come through a king who would rebuild the temple, who would rebuild the temple. In fact, Zechariah once said in nine chapter, chapter 9, verse 9, he once says, Rejoice, O people of Zion. Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on the donkey's colt. He he spoke of a king that would come. And in that moment, he put a city's name on the map, coming down the streets of Jerusalem. He, He... of what every school and fanatic March Madness fan hopes to do and their team to put their name on the map, here Zechariah put the city of Jerusalem on the map. For there will one day be a king, and that king will come, and he will reign in righteousness, and he will be victorious, but he will be humble at the same time. And he will ride in on a donkey, on a colt, in a humble manner through the streets of Jerusalem. So no doubt that if anyone ever lived in Jerusalem, if you ever memorized the scripture, you know what I'm saying? Like if you ever happened to memorize or quilted, or hung up in your house a scripture, and you were from Jerusalem, you better believe they memorized that a king would come, and he would be victorious. He would free us, bring liberty, bring peace, bring prosperity. He would be the king of kings, and yet we would know when he arrives, because he would be walking down and riding down Our streets in Jerusalem. Wow. That's that's exciting. That's exciting if you live in Jerusalem. That's exciting to know that 
no matter what you're walking through, that there will one day come peace, liberty, freedom from a king riding on a donkey down the streets of Jerusalem. And there Zechariah said this in chapter 9, verse 9. And then 400 years of silence. 400 years of absolutely nothing after he says this, which I'll be honest with you, makes me want to laugh and cry all at the same time. Because I have been there before. I have been at the place where I've heard something and where I believe something or I overheard something that I put my faith and I put my hope and I put my trust and I put my dependence on. In fact, I got out there and I started to grind and I started to work and I started to do because I believed with high hopes and a strong faith that what I had heard would come would be ultimately fulfilling in my life. And yet, when I did that with high hopes and strong faith and and diligent work, all of a sudden, nothing happened. Crickets. I've been there. I've been there. I wonder, have have you ever thought, that you knew what was about to happen next in your life? Have you ever wondered and you thought to yourself, I know, I really think and believe that this is what Jesus and God is about to do in my life? Or or better yet, have you ever thought, I know what Jesus needs to do in my life? (laughs) Right? Right? And so then you put your faith in it, you put your trust in it, You put your prayers in it, and you even sprinkle a little going to church in it. Yeah? And then you're there, and you're trusting, and you're waiting, and then nothing happens. Silence. But you still believe. We still believe. We still pray. And and so when, when Easter rolls around, we'll go back to church. I had to plug that one in there. I just, I just did. I mean... It's too close, right? And, um, and then when Christmas rolls around, you know what? Go back there. I just, just throw that in there. And, and so when you do this and you walk this out and you live this, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, again, nothing happens. <laughs> Crickets. Nothing. And this is exactly the way the people in Jerusalem felt then. For they had once heard of what Zechariah had said, but never saw it happen. Believed it, wanted it, prayed for it. Silence. And that's what the people of Jerusalem experienced then, and it's what many of us here today are experiencing now. Prayers that we prayed, hopes that we hoped, dreams that we dream, the things that we long for, we believe in, we so desire, and yet nothing has come. Nothing has come. Until one day, a man named Jesus, appeared. Appeared with his disciples, his best friends. And there, in Mark chapter 11, it says, they, the disciples, brought the cult of a donkey to Jesus. And they threw their garments over it. And he, Jesus, sat on it. And many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him. And others spread the leafy branches they had cut in the fields. Lo and behold, all of the sudden, 
a man appeared named Jesus. And there, his best friends brought him a donkey moving in and towards the city of Jerusalem. Of course, in that time, in that day, Jerusalem was under great oppression and authority of the Roman imperial government. It is the Roman Empire that you know in history books. Great military force pretty much owned and conquered the known world at the time, suppressed and oppressed people through military tactics, brutality in force, heavy taxation, burdensome labor. That is what the people of Jerusalem were experiencing in this day, the oppression of the Roman rule. And lo and behold, in all of their waiting, in all of their frustration, in all of their complaining, but yet praying, hoping, but yet disappointment, there all of the sudden a man appears named Jesus and is given a donkey and is rides in on a donkey through the streets of Jerusalem. And there in that moment, we have a red carpet rolled out. We have a red carpet rolled out like no other. It says that they, they, they spread out their garments on the donkey and the road down the way. The spreading out of garments was significant in that day as an act of welcome or an act of honor. To take off your jacket or your robe in that day or your shirt and lay it before someone, it would mean an act of submission paid only to royalty. And so there they laid their garments out before this man named Jesus who was riding a donkey. And it didn't just stop there. They took palm branches. They took palm branches and began to wave them and chant and throw them also down in the pathway, which is also significant. The waving of palm branches were used on only festive occasions. And they were a token of joy and great triumph. Here we see the people of Jerusalem understanding what they had always been waiting for. What just seemed like a distant memory in the day. What seemed only like a fairy tale to them. Now was happening before their very eyes. That a king would come riding down the streets of Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And when he wishes and does so, he will be victorious. That this individual would be the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he would shake off every oppressing country and enemy. That he would bring liberty, stability, and peace. And right before their eyes. They see all of this happening. And so they lay down their garments as welcoming. And they begin to wave palm branches in festive celebration. A token of joy and triumph. There that day, the people of Jerusalem had waited so long. But in a moment's time, the scripture that they had memorized since they were a child because Zechariah, 500 years before this, put the city of Jerusalem on the map. And there they were, seeing it all right before their eyes. And it says Jesus was in the center of the procession. And the people all around him were shouting, praise God. Some translations say, Hosanna. Blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessings on the kingdom of God and our ancestor David. Praise God. Hosanna in the highest of heavens. Jesus was now at the center of it all. He was the main event. They kept the 
main thing, the main thing. It says that he was in the center of procession and the people went before him and the people were behind him. And there before their eyes, they laid out the red carpet with their garments and palm branches. But then they begin to shout. And then they begin to cheer. And then they begin to chant, Hosanna! Hosanna! And in that moment, the words Hosanna translated for you and I today would mean to save now. Victory for us now. And there they walk down the streets and they begin to shout to the one whom they believe was the king and going to overthrow every oppressing government in their day. And so they chanted, Hosanna, save us now. Victory now. They begin to chant. They begin to cheer. There's a parade walking down the streets of Jerusalem that had no doubt begun and gone into procession. And there, Jesus, in verse 11, came to Jerusalem and went into the temple. After looking around carefully at everything, he left it because it was late in the afternoon. Huh. Okay. That is quite a turn of events. There, the red carpet has been rolled out. Garments have been laid down the streets of Jerusalem. All have recognized this is the moment. Now is the time. He has arrived. There is the donkey. Here is the king. Now is the moment. Now is the time. And so there they chanted and they cheered and they walked him all the way up to what they thought would be the capital. They thought would be the government's headquarters, that they thought they would drop them off at the, at, the, at the palace or the government officials because he is the one who is going to replace the taxation, oppression, burden, bondage, and rule of the Roman Empire. But Jesus took a sharp turn from the capital and went to the temple. An unexpected turn of events. But Jesus knew something that they didn't know then. And Jesus knew something that some of us don't know now. And that is that true liberty and freedom wouldn't come from the capital. It would only come from the cross. True liberty and true freedom, true peace, wouldn't come from a king that was pompous and lived in a palace. That would, that would climb the socioeconomic ladder that would one day ride a donkey, but then would soon ride a Clydesdale. Jesus knew that true liberty and peace and freedom wouldn't come from the capital, but would come from the cross. The cross of Calvary. You see, years upon years, people had spent their lives and laying down their lives for a king. But here that day in that moment on what we call Palm Sunday, a king walked down the road and said, I'll give my life for the people instead of them giving their life for me. You see, Jesus knew then that true freedom didn't come because he was alive. True freedom came because he would once die. It was an unexpected turn of events. And there he went to the temple instead of the political governmental headquarters or the capital. He went to the temple that day. 500 years before, Zechariah had said, an unparalleled salvation will come through a king who would rebuild the temple. But it's an unexpected turn of events. Just like if any of you from time to time are going to live, love, serve, and put your faith and trust in Jesus, all of us will experience some unexpected turns of events in our life. Believe him long enough, follow him long enough, trust him long enough. And you will experience an unexpected turn of event from time to time in your life. Guaranteed. It's when you thought that Jesus was going to do something and you, I know that this is the, this is the time. (laughs) This is it. 
Is it? I see what he's doing. I see it. I see it. And you move to it and you walk to it. And then all of a sudden, whoop, a really quick left-handed turn, an unexpected event. And there in that moment, you question, well, was it God and was it me? And what is this going to be? And when is this going to happen? If your faith is there long enough in Jesus and your relationship is with him there, you will experience the unexpected turn of events in your life with and following and journeying with Jesus. And there that day, he took a sharp turn to the temple. The temple. Remember, Zechariah said of the king would rebuild the temple. You see, in the old days of Zechariah, 500 years before Jesus, the temple signified a building where God's spirit the hope of heaven dwelled in majestic form and power and significance. But that day, Palm Sunday, when Jesus rode on a donkey down the streets of Jerusalem, the temple of God sat on the back of a donkey in the body of Jesus with magnificent glory, power, and splendor power to heal, soothe, and set the captives free, give sight to the blind and give walking ability to the lame and calling out the dead back to life. Jesus was the embodiment there on a donkey of the temple of God. In that moment on Palm Sunday would soon transpire to a good Friday, would soon transpire to a resurrection Sunday so that you and I can now be the temple of God so that we now are the ones who possess by faith the hope of heaven, true liberty, true love, true peace, true hope, true all of heaven dwelling now, not in a temple in a physical building, not on the back of a donkey, but in all who would believe in Jesus. That day, Jesus took an unexpected turn of events because he knew that no greater love is there than one who would lay down his life for another. That day, for the people of Jerusalem, the wait was over. It was over was over and what Jesus did on that Palm Sunday to Good Friday to Resurrection Sunday is still true for us today your wait is over the peace that you want to overcome the anxiety and the depression in your life the freedom that you want from the addiction and the bondage. The hope that you want to one day overcome your past, your mistakes, your childhood, the things that you said, the things that you've done. Your dreams and your desires that you you feel like you were born with. You were born to accomplish. You were born to walk out, but don't have the courage and the boldness to step out and do. Today, wherever you are, whatever everlasting life you need, what is it that you need? What is it that you need? Because the wait is over. All of heaven lives on the inside of you for those who believe all of the courage that you need, all of the strength that you need, all of the peace that you need, all of the love, all of the freedom, all of the life, all of the hope, anything you need now lives on the inside of you to those who believe. Stand with me as we close today. It's Palm Sunday, everybody, not just March Madness. So today, 
So today, would you take off your garment and lay it on the streets of Jerusalem? I, on the way here, I thought I should cut down palm branches for everybody here today, but I realized I would never make it here because that would take a really long time. But would you wave a palm branch today in honor and glory in the one and the only one, the victorious King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the author and perfecter of your faith. He was and is and will always be. The wait is over. The wait is over. So Jesus, right now, I pray over every man, woman, boy, and girl in this place. In their waiting, in their struggle, in their longing and in their prayers, and in their waiting and their silence, that you would remind them today that the King has come and the wait is over. And what they need today is found in you, Jesus. So today, we lay our garment before you. Today, we wave the palm branches before you. You are our one and only. The wait is over in Jesus' name. There are some here, no doubt, a crowd this size that you have never fully waved the palm branch. You've never laid out your garments honoring the one who is the only one that can give you what you really need. You've tried this and that, and yet in time, unfulfilled. But something today is going on on the inside of you that you can't quite describe. And it is Jesus riding on a donkey down your street. That's what it is. And he is not doing it in judgment or condemnation. He is doing it in love, grace, and mercy because he knows you by name. And he knows right where you are today. And so if that is you this morning and you say, I today need to lay down my garment. I today need to wave the palm branch. I today need to do it again because that was a thing of the past. If that's you this morning on the count of three with all boldness, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand right where you are. Nothing significant or special about it. It's just an outward display of an inward decision. If that's you this morning, one, two, three, just lift up your hand right where you are, all across this place, right there, all the way in the back of the sand dunes. If that's you this morning, just slip up your hand. God sees it. God sees you. He knows you. Let's pray for those who are making decisions today. All of us out loud, I say, Jesus. We love you. We, love you. we, we lay down, we lay our, down life, our life, our garment, our, garment, our palm branches. Our garment. Today, we're new Today we're new in you. In you. By, your grace, By your grace, mercy, mercy and, love. and love. In Jesus' name. Jesus. As the prayer team comes down front, on a glorious Palm Sunday, could we lift our voices? Could we lift our spirits? And give him all the glory and honor and praise that he deserves. In this time of desperation, all we know is doubt and fear. There is only one foundation. We believe, we believe In this broken generation All is dark, you help us see There is only one salvation We 
Jesus Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit and has given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that in conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and is coming back again. We believe. Let our faith be more than anthems Greater than the songs we sing In our weakness and temptations We believe Come on, help me out We believe We believe in God the Father We believe Christ, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and He's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He died in hell. We believe in the resurrection, and He's coming back again. So let the lost be found, and let me raise here and now. Love the invasion of the church. Our God will say, we believe, we believe, and the gates of hell will not prevail. Father of God, restore the veil. We know your love will never fail. We believe, we believe. You believe that today? Let's, let's lift this up again. We believe in God, God the Father. Father. We believe in, in Jesus Christ. Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit And He's given us new life We believe in the crucifixion We believe that He conquered death We believe in the resurrection And He's coming back He's coming back again Oh, you believe that today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome day. What a great crowd. We're so welcome. Glad that you joined us today. Listen, on the way out, we have these green tackle boxes. It's kind of a play on we're fishers of men. So most of the money we raise goes right back into our community. We partner with several entities that, that do everything from help young men to clothe people and feed people. So this is a great place to sow, place to sow a seed. So we appreciate your consideration in that. You've got QR codes on your handouts. You could do that, that way as well. And with that being said, if God is for you, who, who can be against you? you? We believe. God bless you. Thank you.